Okay, what is up, Patreon crew? Welcome. Dude, we are listening to another album today. We have It's a Beautiful Day uh, doing the album titled It's a Beautiful Day from 1969. I am so excited. This is from Patreon member Robert Hassinger. So thank you, Robert. Really appreciate you. Uh, you only give me good stuff. So this is from 1969. This is a full album we're going to be listening to. I don't know anything about this band to do, so let's go on the Wikipedia page and see what we can find out. Uh, so, San Francisco band, okay. Uh, it's a Beautiful Day is an American band formed in San Francisco, California in 1967, featuring vocalist Patty Santos along with violinist David Laflame and his wife Linda Laflame on keyboards. Now, as I am recording this, I have also just learned... That just at the beginning of this month, David Laflame passed away on August 10th, 2023. And um, it was actually August 6th. My bad, I got those dates wrong. Uh, I saw a comment. Uh, so I guess somebody found out on August 10th. So it's August 6th. My bad. Rest in peace, David Laflame, dude. Uh, just as we were going to get into your stuff. So, yeah, let's just uh, keep him in our thoughts as we continue on this reaction. Uh, so, his wife, Linda Laflame, was also on keyboards in this band, so that's really cool to learn. Uh, David Laflame, who, as a youth, had once performed as a soloist with the Utah Symphony Orchestra, had previously been in the group Orchestra playing five string violin. Five string violin? What does that even sound like, dude? Probably does. What, what end does it have an extra string, the high or the low end? Uh, the other members of It's a Beautiful Day in its early years were Val Fuentes on drums, Mitchell Holman on bass, and Hal Wagonette on guitar. Although they were one of the notable San Francisco bands who emerged from 1967's Summer of Love. The band never achieved the success of contemporaries such as the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, and Santana, with whom they had connections. The band created a unique blend of rock, jazz, folk, classical, and world beat styles. Well, dude. Okay, so lots of good information there, dude. Let me know if you have anything else you want me to share. Also, go on over to patreon.com slash John Slub if you're watching this on YouTube, dude. There's lots of goodies over there early access and you can submit your own requests depending on your tier so why not just jump right on in to this album dude i can't wait it's a beautiful day it's a beautiful day dude what's the first song on this album dude um also let's read a little bit on the uh wiki on the album dude this is the debut studio album uh the album song white bird was the band's biggest hit the album rose to number 47 on the Billboard's Top LP's American Albums chart. Okay, dude. Uh, this was released in June 1969. Uh, okay, so. Oh, this is a really cool cover, too. I can't wait to show you. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can bring that up real quick. There we go. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful artwork. Can't wait to get into this one. Uh, depicts a woman standing on top of like a supposedly like a mountain, just taking in the breeze, taking in the air, dude. Uh, yeah, it looks like a calming time. Uh, the design used an old version of the Columbia Records logo that George Hunter felt fit better with the feel of the rest of the cover. The album cover is number 24 on Rolling Stone's list of 100 greatest album covers. The girl can also be seen in the background on the cover of Happy Trails by Quicksilver Messenger Service. What? That's really cool. I like little Easter eggs like that. Uh, the figure on Quicksilver Messenger's Happy Trails album cover is not the same female image on the It's a Beautiful Day album cover. Uh, okay. So we have two conflicting sentences here, maybe just edited by two different people. Who knows? But um, really cool. So, yeah, without further ado, let's just uh, white bird is coming up first, friends. So let's just jump on into it. Here we go. It's a beautiful day. Thank you. 
darkened sky in its rage. But the white bird just sits in her cage Beautiful violin work. Oh my gosh, dude. Uh, so yeah, we have... Oh, I don't know if we actually have like a violin. Oh, no, yes, David Laflame is on violin, dude. Of course, of course. Uh, I just didn't see it listed here. So we have David Laflame, violin, flute, lead vocals, Linda Laflame on acoustic and electric piano, organ, Celeste, harpsichord, Hal Wagonet on guitars, Mitchell Holman on bass, backing vocals, Val Fuentes on drums, backing vocals, and Patty Santos on percussion, tambourine bells, female vocals, and Bruce Steinberg, dude, on harmonica. Oh my god, so this is such a beautiful start. Reading these lyrics, it's so poetic, dude. White bird in a golden cage on a winter's day in the rain. Uh, so some symbolism here um, on Genius. Uh, we get some backstory, dude. We were living in the attic of an old Victorian house in Seattle and performing at the Encore Ballroom. It was a typical Seattle winter day, rainy and drizzly. We were looking out from the attic window over the street in front of this old house. It was on Capitol Hill, the old section of town across from Volunteer Park. The song describes the picture Linda and I saw as we looked out of this little window in this attic. We had a little Wurlitzer portable piano sitting right in the well of this window, and I'd sit and work on songs. When you hear lines like, the leaves blow across the long back road onto the darkened sky and its rage, it's describing what I was seeing out the window. Wow. Wow, beautiful. Uh, to continue, where the white bird thing came from, we were like caged birds in that attic. We had no money, no transportation. The weather was miserable. We were just barely getting by on a very small food allowance provided to us. It was quite an experience, but it was very creative in a way. Wow. Okay. Well, let's get back into this one, dude. I'm enjoying it very much. Let's just take it back a few seconds.
It just ends like that, dude? That was White Bird. What are we moving into next, dude? A beautiful song, dude. White Bird Must Fly. Do not try to confine. Hot Summer Day. Okay, real quick, real quick. I just got to say, I am loving how this album is starting out, dude. I just got to get that, those thoughts out real quick. We're going to start the song over. Um, but dude, White Bird, what a lovely song. Yeah, no, I was just getting lost in that uh, last bit of it, dude. Such beautiful voices. Uh, okay, yeah, let's just get in, get back into White, or Hot Summer Day, dude. I love the violin work too. Quick pause, dude. I am loving this song. It's interesting how they're kind of uh, using a hot summer's day to kind of compare it to a love that's gone, dude. That's really interesting. I love the imagery here given in the chorus, dude. And I want to grab that river and stop the love that's dying. Because I know that somewhere deep inside my soul, you're still lying. Waiting to awaken. Almost like a lost love, dude. Uh, this is interesting. I love how poetic everything is so far. And this bridge, what are we going to get into? Let's, let's get into it, dude. Oh, 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 where did you go?
the sun turned green I said I didn't know And they told me that the moon turned blue I said I didn't show And they told me that I looked a fool And I said I'd let that go But when they told me that I'm dude that was amazing i love that was a bit more dramatic too holy crap uh you know it deserves it because of the context within the lyrics dude i love that's gone that's sad especially on a hot summer day like geez that's exactly what we're going through nowadays dude it's literally been so hot but this weekend apparently we got a hurricane coming so like what? Anyways, I digress. This was a great track. That was uh, Hot Summer Day, track number two on It's a Beautiful Day, dude. Let's keep it moving. What did you think about that one? Let's uh, keep it going into Wasted Union Blues. Here we go.
hold on, dude. This song is wild. That intro, though. Uh, at first, I was like, what the heck did I just hear the intro? It's apparently one, two, three, four, one spelled backwards. That's wild. Okay. Uh, and this song obviously reminds me of like uh, Dazed and Confused uh, by Led Zeppelin, but just a bit more unhinged. Like, yeah, this is like Dazed and Confused times two. Uh, and I love the speed up, dude. This whole song is crazy. It sounds wild. I can't even believe this came out in 69. What did people think of this track? Uh, let's just get back into this one. Spirits all tell me gotta keep driving on. track that was dude that was probably the most intense experience so far holy crap what <laughs> that was wasted union blues uh wow what i thought we were gonna get some kind of like solidarity with workers message uh but Maybe, maybe we do, dude. Bridge, spirits all tell me, gotta keep driving on. And my brothers all tell me I can do no wrong. But the universe tells me I can't leave myself alone, alone. Dude, what? Wow. What a trippy track. Let me know your thoughts on this one. I just feel like this is about somebody tri having a bad trip, dude. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, wow, this song was fun, though. Let's get back into this, dude. Girl with no eyes to end the side A, dude. And then we're going to be getting into Bombay Calling and the rest of the album, dude. So Girl with no eyes. Oh, my God. Do I even want to listen to this? <laughs> uh, here we go. I don't like that. That's really scary. Girl with no eyes, who can she be? The girl with no eyes, she's looking at me. There's a girl in my room and her face 
face on the wall with no eyes If I make a sound, she'll know that I'm stirring inside <laughs> What the fuck, dude? If I make a sound, she'll know that I'm trying to hide Blue with no eyes, who can she be? Dude, <laughs> this is probably one of the most like frightening songs I've heard just based on the lyrics. Dude, the song is beautiful, right? If you don't speak English, the song is the song probably sounds like the most beautiful song you've probably ever heard, right? But God damn, I'm not like superstitious or anything, right? But like when I imagine this. I just become so frightened. Like, I, I, this is stuff of nightmares, dude. It's like a waltz kind of feel. It's a beautiful song, dude. This is great. I love it. Ugh. Let's just get back into it. <laughs> Holy crap. It, it, there needs to be like a horror movie based on this. There probably already was, has been made. So, and honestly, the song's probably not even meant to be scary. Who knows? Who knows? What do you have to say about it so far? Let's get back into it, dude. Yo, real quick, let me tell you about Patreon. Patreon.com slash John Slop. Early access to all these videos, full album reactions, full movie reactions. Think about that. Let's jump back into the reaction. Girl, she seems to be staring. Doesn't everybody know? Everybody know love takes lifetime. Dude, real quick, what was that instrument we just heard? I just really... So that could either be um, Celeste or a... I think that might be a Celeste, dude. Is a Celeste like a small harp? Because that's what that sounded like. Oh, a Celeste is another piano-like instrument. Okay. Also called a bell piano. Whoa. Struck ideophone operated by a keyboard. That's wild, dude. Gotta see an exhibition of one of these at some point. Uh, well, let me know if you can help out identifying that instrument. Uh, that was beautiful. Let's just get back into it. All of the time that's gone by. Just a reflection of all. Time has been hard. Grew with no eyes, who can she be? Grew with no eyes, she's looking at me. Beautiful girl, who does she see? Beautiful girl, she seems to be staring. Staring with no eyes, dude? Doesn't everybody know? Everybody know love takes a lifetime. And doesn't everybody know? Everybody know love is the high side. It's the high side.
was so beautiful. I love that song so much, even though it creeped me the hell out at first. But like, I feel like the girl with no eyes is a simple symbol, dude. I feel like I shouldn't be too scared of it. I just can't help. That was my initial feelings, dude. <laughs> I'm over it now, though. Like, fantastic tone on that violin. Uh, she's just a reflection of all of the time that's gone by. She's just a reflection of all the time I've been high. Oh, is this kind of like maybe regretting your maybe wasted time being high? Oh, that's why they call it wasted, dude. I never really realized that. That's hilarious. Because people were being judgmental and considering that time wasted, like... Oh, he's wasted. I get it. I get it. Okay. Interesting. So, is this like the drug context of high? Uh, what do you have to say about this one, dude? Uh, pff, Girl with no eyes. Probably my favorite track so far. Just of how wild it is, dude. All right, let's keep it going. What's up next? Side B. That was the end of side A. Dude, uh, I think we might end it here for the YouTube audience. So probably catch you in the next one, YouTube audience. But Patreon crew, we're going to keep it rolling, friends. So if you want to check the second side of this album, go on over to patreon.com slash John Slop to get early access. Or you can just be a little patient because it'll be coming up pretty soon. Uh, okay, so jumping into side B with Bombay Calling. Here we go.
is Bombay Calling. Beautiful instrumental, oh my god. Dude. Real quick, just gotta pause it. On the About section of Genius, uh, somebody wrote, The song was a direct and clear inspiration to one of Deep Purple's classics, Child in Time. Uh, wow, dude. Dun, dun, dun. Dude, I heard it just at the end there. Wild. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, wow, okay, so we hear the original Child in Time. This is amazing. Holy crap, this instrumental is so cool. Bombay Calling. I was not prepared for an instrumental, but I'm so glad we got one, dude. I don't know. Putting an instrumental on your album always tells me you just love music. It actually tells me you love the craft and you love the sound that instruments make. I don't know. Instead of just obviously going for putting your voice front and center all the time, uh, you give the instruments a little bit time to shine, dude. And the members who are playing those instruments. Uh, wow. What did you think of that one? Beautiful work from everybody. Uh, so let's keep it moving, friends. That was Bombay Colin. Let's get into Bulgaria. Okay, we're just going all over the world here.
hold on. I feel like we're moving into the next song. Ooh, wow. Let's just reflect on what we just heard. I feel like this was some kind of like Eastern philosophy trip. I don't know. It could it could just be like you know talking about when you're in a dream, getting really like introspective, existential even. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. Go sleep on the moment you were born. Dude, that that line right there leads me to believe this is like Eastern philosophy inspired. I uh, would not be surprised. You know, the Beatles, of course. Um, love for you and me. Love for you and me. Let be all the love within you tonight. Yeah, this seems to be kind of like trying to just like fill up your whole existence with love. While also talking about dreams, dude, I feel like this is also maybe drug inspired. I don't know. What do you think? Dude, let's get back into the album, dude. I think this is the last track on the album. That was Bulgaria. Uh, getting into Time Is Now. Dude. Let's just back it up a few seconds and let's keep it going, friends. <laughs> Love this organ, dude. These piano sections, oh, what? This, these are like some of the most creative songs I've ever heard. Like this is some of the best music I've ever heard. I love this so much. It's so like dark and heavy, psychedelic. Also a, a recurring theme, love. You know, we, uh, we saw on their Wikipedia page that they came out of like the Summer of Love from 1967. So uh, it's very fitting. Uh, let's just keep this one running. This is an energetic fest, dude. Uh, back it up a little bit. <laughs> wow, okay. Such a contrast to last song. Uh, here we go, dude.
I love this so much, dude. must die and then a new day comes and there's a new day's dawn and there's a new day's sun and love stays on sweet love stays on Quick pause, dude. This is amazing. I just love everything about this. Like that drum solo, the echo that was added to it, I kind of thought it might have been like layered on like another track, dude. But I don't know if they even, I'm pretty sure they had that tech back then. But you know, why bother when you could just add some echo to it? Like, holy crap, that was fantastic. And this whole song from the TikToks uh, to just the horns in this to the piano dude the discordant uh, notes that's like my favorite part of this whole song is when the keys just go Bing -ing, 
Yeah. I can't do it with my mouth. I wish I could do two notes at the same time. We're almost done, dude. Let's just get back into this. Back it up a couple seconds and just... Wow. It's a beautiful day with the song Time Is. God, dude. That is how they end the album. <laughs> Very fitting. My God, one of the most trippy experiences I have ever had with music. Literally, this is probably the top tier, like... Get high, listen to this shit, dude, and you will have one of the best experiences, dude. I am sad that I did not trip harder. I was like, I need to be, I, dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have plans for a day, dude. For some day. You know, maybe it can be a Patreon thing, dude. We can trip out together. Maybe I'll take some edibles. We can make a thing of it, but dude. Wow, just so much creativity, so much talent, and in such a odd, unique, characteristic package, dude. Oh, wow. I can't even believe it's over, like, what I just listened to. This is literally, I can't understate this, or overstate, I mean, this is one of the best albums I've ever listened to because of how crazy they got. Dude, they didn't give a crap about what audiences thought. They probably wanted to make something that resonated with, like, people who love trippy experiences. Robert Assinger, thank you so much. You've outdone yourself, literally. Uh, I'm just so pleased. It's a beautiful day with the album. It's a beautiful day. From 1969, dude. Wow. What do you have to say about this one? Please share your thoughts, dude. What was the... What was... What did people think of this album when it came out, dude? Did Was it revered? Of course, okay, the youngsters probably liked it, right? The teenagers probably thought this album was dope as hell. But uh, the adults were probably like... No, you're not listening to this, dude. This is trash. They probably heard some of the distorted uh, guitars and, um, dude, some of the organs probably were being passed through a distortion uh, amp. And uh, that's probably the, the, the first thing I heard. And they were probably like, nope, you're not listening to this little Johnny. Uh, but yeah, no, this is, this is great, dude. I, I'm just so happy. So. Thank you all again for joining me. I hope you all enjoyed. 
this was a lot of fun. Let me know if I missed anything. Uh, again, rest in peace. David Laflame. Laflamme? Not sure how to pronounce your name, dude. We just met. We just became acquainted. I hope we can check out more. Dude, this was... This was very, very moving. Very moving. So, thank you, Robert Hassinger. All right, Patreon crew. I will uh, talk to y'all in the next one. So, please, just uh, relax and sit tight. We have more coming soon before the end of the month. So, all right. Talk to you later. Peace.